Hello guys, today we're going to have a look at this uh, Secret Control 32 motor. Uh, normally I use this uh, kind of clear plastic motor gearbox, so it's pretty clear that this one is a, a little, um, I think it's a company called Standard Motor, makes the motor, and a brass gearbox. But since we can't see into this one, I'm going to open it up and show you what's inside. So the first thing to do, obviously enough, is just to take the wheels off. And unlike the other, uh, the other CQ motor, which you just pull the wheels off, this one is a little bit better. It has a little, uh, little bolt with an internal tread, which treads on to the end of the the shaft on the motor here, so the the rear axle. And also, the little hex nut isn't press fit onto this shaft, whereas it is on the other motor. So the little hex nut uh, can slide up on this shaft, the shaft is keyed here so you can see there's a flat surface there a bit hard to see on the camera but I think you can see it and if you look in the bolt here it is also keyed and that just matches the key on the shaft there so that's a handy little feature too and uh, to open this little bolt you need one of these kind of star uh, shaped screwdriver heads so it's just a little star shaped head it's not a Phillips or a flat so take the other one off there's the hex nut in there the screws holding the motor together are very small uh, Phillips head screws. So we'll maybe take the motor off first. There's two screws holding the motor on. That's a bit of plastic just pops off there. Uh, we should be able to carefully take our motor out. Well, straight away we have plastic gears on this one so our other motor is all brass gears so I'm not so confident in this uh, motor although the plastic gear on this end um, wouldn't be under a huge amount of pressure it's going to be the one at the very end that's going to have all the force because the motor itself doesn't have very much uh, torque but once it's through the gearbox the final gear is going to be under pressure so if the rest of the gearbox is brass then it mightn't be too bad but uh, this this gearbox at the minute is looking a little bit cheaper than this one so although it's more expensive so I'm not sure what you're getting for your money really but we shall see um, this is another one of these standard motors the number is FVN uh, 20 uh, dash F and I think it's a 3.6 volt motor with um, a stall current of maybe 0.6 amps, something like that. So shouldn't be wasting too much power with that. So we continue through the um, through the motor. It's uh, with the plastic gears. It's probably just like a cheap servo gearbox or something like that. The other the other motor looked a little bit better with the brass gears. Okay, so that's all the screws. Uh, hopefully, we'll take this apart without losing all the gears. So it's all plastic gears in there. The entire gear, tra gear train is uh, nylon gears by the look of things. So that's probably keeping cost down for Siku. If this motor was three, actually sorry, it was nearly ten euros more expensive than the the other motor. If we look at our our axle here, we have a spring-loaded final gear. So in our gear train, our very final gear has this spring-loaded mechanism on it 
Now, like I said a minute ago, the final gear is going to be under all the load, so all the pressure is going to be on this gear, which is why I said that I didn't think uh, nylon gears was a great choice for the gearbox, because um, you can easily rip the teeth off uh, nylon gear. You've probably done it before yourselves with uh, servos. I do it quite a bit because I'm kind of push the servos to their limit. But with a servo, you can get a, a thing called a servo saver, which basically lets the the servo uh, arm slip if it goes over a certain uh, a certain pressure. So I think that's what this is. I would imagine if you put too much load on the axle here, so you try to push too heavy a load, this gear probably moves in this way and slips on some sort of uh, joint. So I would imagine the gear that we see here is actually separated from this nylon ring in here and I presume when you put enough pressure on the gear it moves out this way and slips around and probably meshes into some teeth further along this drive and it keeps doing that to save the gear from being destroyed so it will just keep clicking along here if you're loaded it too much that is probably what's happening there so that's a good bit of uh, thought there from whoever designed this motor to try and save the, the gears but I'm pretty sure the reason that they've done this although it is quite a nice uh, uh, design to, to save the gearbox from being destroyed but I'm pretty sure the only reason they had to do that is because they were trying to cut costs by using uh, cheap nylon gears I'm pretty sure this uh, nice brass gearbox would uh, You'd have to put it under huge stress to break the, the brass gears, I think, because uh, this gear or this little motor doesn't have a huge amount of power. Now, if you had this in the model and you started pushing the model, forcing the gearbox around, driving it backwards, I'd say you'd probably break the gearbox that way. But I don't think under normal loads, driving it from the motor, that you'd be able to break the brass gears. So I think they were just trying to save themselves uh, some money or maximise their profits by using a cheaper uh, motor but I could be wrong there could be some brilliant reason for using the nylon gears that I just don't I don't know okay so I bought that type of motor just so that I could compare it to this one really but I think in future I'd buy the brass uh, gearbox myself I don't really push the models too hard I don't think whereas if you were pushing this hard enough to engage that um, that little mechanism there you'd probably wear that out after a while and then yeah, once it started to wear it would be the tractor would be able to push less and less load but that said if you broke this one you'd have to completely replace it so I don't know it's up to up to you what you think is the, the best for your models but I think I'd uh, trust the brass ones myself if you like that video make sure and give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments on uh, on the motors or where we can find these motors it's uh, there's not very many websites that sell these motors so if you know of one uh, please let us know in the comments don't forget to shoot over to the forum if you have any other questions or suggestions uh, I'm always happy to answer them if I can I'll be putting these motors in the New Holland model the um, low loader so uh, if you want to see that make sure and hit the subscribe button that's everything for today so thanks very much for watching